Welcome to Shaw TV's six-part Learn to Ski series. I'm Vanessa Ibera. Well, here along the Sea to Sky, we live in one of the most beautiful and rugged areas in the world. So when I moved here about a year ago or so, I made a point to take advantage of the beautiful scenery and learn to ski. So first up, of course, I had to buy the essentials, the hat, the poles, the jackets, the goggles, you name it. All that was left was finding the perfect fitting pair of ski boots. As I say, nothing will cut your day shorter on the hill than sore feet. So I went to the place where I knew I would get a truly one of a kind experience. Let's check it out. Here at Surefoot, the boot fitting process starts the minute you walk in the door. Hey Sam. Hi Vanessa, welcome to Surefoot. Thanks. Are you ready to get your Surefoot custom ski boots? Yeah, let's do this. The fitting process at Surefoot is essentially a three-step process. We start by taking a digital scan of the foot. So Vanessa, what we're going to start with is just taking some length and width measurements of your foot. After measuring and inputting my data into the system, Sam then places my feet on top of 500 little pins. Oh, tickles. <laughs> which together create a mold of each foot that will be used to build custom insoles, with no feet too difficult for this boot fitter. Surefoot as a company has scanned close to 1.7 million feet, so we've seen everything uh, from you know small bunions to different foot lengths to just hypersensitive feet. Getting the boots made properly to your foot shape in that neutral position is the most important thing. Now that your foot's been scanned, we come into the back here, we simply pull it up off the internet. Sam then carefully placing each insole onto a milling board where it's loaded cut, and finally smooth over to ensure the insole is exact replica of the customer's feet. Having a boot that fits properly, comfortably, and skis to its best potential is really a benefit to everybody, whether you be an absolute beginner skier or the best skier in the world. It's going to help you stay longer on the hill, have a better day. It's going to help you learn how to ski more easily. And then comes the best part, picking the boots. This Nordica boot matches up really well with your foot shape. The performance level of the boot will help you ski as well as you can out there. Proper socks are a pivotal part. You have to make sure you're wearing a thin, well-fitted, wicking sock. Make sure you're going to be as warm and as comfortable as possible. With my feet already feeling nice and comfortable, it's time for the third and final step. It's like a science experiment here. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> eh? Mixing two liquid solutions together, Sam creates and then pumps foam into my custom boot liners to make them that much more comfortable and easy to wear. Almost done, Vanessa. You're doing great. And while the process of finding the perfect boot fit may seem like a long and detailed one, for this ski lover, being able to help novices such as myself start off on the right foot makes it all worth it. You go out and not have to worry about their foot moving around in their ski boot or you know when their ski instructor says I need you to lean forward and go down the hill this way, they're able to do that because they have the control and with that control they get confidence. Up until really the early 2000s, to get a boot that fits you very, very well, it was a difficult thing to do. Nowadays you can come in within an hour and a half, you're skiing on a boot that's exactly the shape of your foot. Oh, these feel awesome. The main thing, the toes can wiggle, so. Awesome. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much, Sam. My pleasure. Go enjoy the hill. Well, now that I've found my perfect fitting pair of ski boots, it's officially time to start my lessons. Well, up in Whistler, the Whistler Black Home Snow School is known as one of the best in North America. They offer everything from single to group lessons, adaptive lessons. You can even learn how to ski with an Olympic racer. All you have to do is sign up. So, here goes nothing. Well, I've tweeted and talked about this for months. Well, now the time has finally come to face the mountain and learn to ski. It's all gonna be easy, it's always gonna be fun, but something tells me it's gonna be worth it. So let's get going. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Andrew, nice to meet you. Welcome to your first day of lessons. You ready to do this? Sure, no turning back. All right, gondola is this way. As a Whistler Blackcomb ski instructor for 14 years, it's safe to say Andrew has taught hundreds of beginners such as myself. We in the Max 4 program teach adults, so it's 19 and older. We get people from Mexico City who have never seen snow and any place in the world. I've taught all categories. Mine and all other beginners adventures, starting with the scenic ride up the gondola. Uh, we are heading up Whistler Mountain. While the view of the mountain and Whistler Village below is truly breathtaking, it's hard to fully appreciate it, knowing the smaller it gets, the closer I am to following through on my skiing promise. We've got about 
four more minutes here on the gondola. I guess no turning back now. All right, Vanessa. This is our mid-mountain learning area here on Whistler Mountain. It's known as Olympic Station. We teach our adult beginners level one, two, and three here. We're gonna start with some mobility exercises. These first exercises of the day being surprisingly without skis. Fine with me. They're just trying to get used to the ski boots, walking heel to toe, heel to toe. By putting the skis on right away, it makes it very hard to move around because it's very foreign. So by doing it without the skis on, you can get used to some of the motions without having to worry about sliding and suddenly losing control. Okay, now let's see if we can go around the circle walking sideways. Okay, sideways here. There you go, good. With my balance and coordination slowly improving, next it's on to opening up the hips. Everything should be coming from the hips. The, the legs are turning here within the hips, yes. Okay. I'm skiing. Look at me, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Not quite. Turns out in skiing, the average recreational skier can reach a speed of up to 40 kilometers an hour cruising down the mountain, which is why posture is also crucial to help avoid injury and maintain smooth acceleration. Keeping the shoulders sort of approximately over top of knees, over top of toes, so an athletic position. And the upper body is just slightly bent and flexed forward. Hands are relaxed and towards the front. With this the first time beginners such as myself have ever handled mountain equipment, Whistler Blackcomb's Max 4 and all other novice lessons also include learning the essentials from how to unlock skis. If you lift this ski here, it'll, they'll just come apart for you. Right down to the proper way to clip boots into bindings. Right foot, toe goes in here. Uh. Whoa, whoa, gentle, <laughs> gentle. Finger. Toe goes in first yeah. and step down. Ta-da! Nice. That easy, eh? All right, <laughs> awesome. all right. And with that, it's finally time to ski. Sort of. Follow me, please. We move into sliding around with one ski on, just developing some experience. Good position, good. Heads up, looking where we're going. For people who have no experience, to have their feet slide away on them, they're not used to it. Falling is, uh, is not unusual. All right. Ah! You were lucky. I may be lucky right now, but I'm not so sure for what's about to come next. All right, Vanessa, how are you feeling? You ready for two skis? Oh, God. Why not? <laughs> Let's try Excellent. this. Excellent. Come on over. It was really neat to see all different ages up at the Learning Center. Everything from three-year-olds to get this. They could teach up to 90-year-olds, so really cool. All right, well, uh, when it comes to downhill skiing, of course, you're going downhill. Well, for newbies such as myself, Giving into gravity can be a bit of an intimidating feat. Well, luckily my visions of a complete vertical drop couldn't have been further from the truth. Well, I'm a quarter of the way to becoming a skier. And besides almost taking out Andrew's finger, whoa, whoa, gentle. <laughs> and my arms killing me after the first lesson, I'd say I'm doing pretty good so far. The big question being, can I handle two skis? Well, let's find out. Some people have never seen snow before, so they've never slid. Well, at least I've seen snow, so how hard can two skis be? All right, Vanessa, we're gonna push ourselves over this way. So, planting the poles, giving a little push. And push. Oh, I'm feeling this tomorrow. Yeah, you will. I may be doing some weird crisscross pole action, but hey, at least my skis are still on solid ground. Next, it's time to learn the most crucial part. The biggest fear. I guess it's learning how to manage the acceleration that you start to feel as you slide. If you get going faster than you're comfortable with, at this stage of the game, use your pizza, it will slow you down. So apparently in the world of skiing, a stop is referred to as a pizza? I had to ask. Where, where on earth does that come from, eh? What's the shape of a pizza? <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> now that that's clearly sorted, Andrew has to go through a series of exercises practicing that pizza position. From there, it's on to sidestepping. It's nice how light the skis are. And then, attempting my first till. I'm just giving myself a little push and just going for a little slide. Let's just say things got off to a slippery start. Ah! There you go. You're good. You're good. <laughs> However, after quick composure, it was smooth, albeit slow sailing for this girl. There you go. <laughs> Look at me, Mom, I'm skiing. <laughs> it's very quick to get going fast and you can suddenly find yourself in the trees. So this sets you up for success. Biggest misconception, how little effort it's going to take. Yes, it's downhill skiing. Yes, you're using gravity, but there is a fair bit of work that gets done by your body just in, in balancing and standing in that athletic position. And with that, 
I'd like to spend a little bit more time here, going a little faster maybe, okay. a little more thrilling. It's finally time to attempt the level three hill. Aside from initially flailing my pulls around like a madwoman, before you know it, I got the hang of things. Honestly, I've never felt a cooler sensation than gliding down that mountain. I think I may have just been bitten by the skiing bug. Most people are thrilled. It's such a neat experience to feel the excitement and the acceleration. In Never Everland here, to be able to teach people this, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting to see their faces, they're learning and they're feeling what you felt today. Eh? 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 That was eh? awesome! High five, that, that was one. amazing! <laughs> Along with pizza, another common stop method for beginners is called snow plowing. Another random thing I learned, if you're going down the hill going parallel with your skis, it's called french fries. Kind of random. And let me say, as I learned, nothing will make you hungrier faster than think about fast food for four hours on the hill. Well, stick with us, because when we return, I'm going to face what all new skiers dread, the chairlift. You're watching Shaw TV. Welcome back to Shaw TV's Learn to Ski series. I'm Vanessa Ibera. Well, now that I've successfully learned how to ski on two skis, you think I pretty much got it, right? Well, not so much. It's kind of neat in the sport of skiing, there's always something new to learn. Whether it's trying out new equipment or terrain, try out new skills, there's always something different. Well, in this next story, I'm going to attempt what many new skiers dread, the chairlift. And I don't know what it is about the chairlift, maybe knowing everyone's watching you get on or knowing you have five seconds to battle this thing, it can be quite intimidating. So, let's see how I do. All right, George, so we're heading up the mountain once again for my third lesson. You've seen the tapes. How have I done so far? I think you're pretty amazing, actually. You've done pretty well. So I think for our lesson today, maybe we'll start once again on the magic carpet. Every year, thousands of people flock here to Whistler Mountain's Learning Center to learn to ski, with 2015 their best year yet. We could have used probably another 100 or 200 instructors. We just had that many people wanting to take lessons but you won't hear this pro of the year complaining. I love skiing, I love people, yeah, it's fun. Really a lot of fun, very satisfying. Today I'd start my lesson off practicing basic turns one more time. Confidence in check, it's time for... The Chairlift. Okay, right up to the green line. You're gonna take your poles in the middle and look to the outside and take that bar in your hand when the chair comes so you don't get hit in the bum with it. Very good. Hey. Super. Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now just enjoy the view. And now we relax. So where are we heading up to here? This is a green run or what's... This is a green run. This is a specific teaching area here. It's pretty easy. And surprisingly, so was getting off the chairlift. Good. Keep right. forward. Super. <laughs> Super. That wasn't too bad. I like the scream. That's good. <laughs> now that we're over that hurdle, it's time to officially start our lesson. Look down, turn the left leg, squeeze the snow. We kind of go on an outline. We have like five, five principles. Uh, the first one is the way we stand. We like to keep a nice loose stance. The other thing we try to do is turning with the lower body. It's super, really nice. Okay, up. George making me hold my poles directly in front of me to help stabilize my upper body. Super, nice, really good. Next, it's on to edging. This skill requires putting your weight on the downhill ski in order to maintain balance during a turn. It's a little more similar to a car where you turn the steering wheel and the car leans on the outside tires. It doesn't lift up and go on the inside tires. So there's more stability there. And if you don't do it well, this happens. Up. Ah! It's very important is to learn how to control our intuition because skiing is not always intuitive, it's very counterintuitive, leaning on the outside of a turn, and that's something that people have a little bit of trouble with. How's the intuition and the panic button? Going? Intuition's pretty good. Pretty I, good feel like, eh? I feel like I'm overthinking too much. That's probably my problem. Yeah, like, so you gotta relax a little more. You haven't fallen down yet. I haven't, I know. No, We're gonna jinx ourselves. Yes, we are. No! Slow down, go back up. I can't! <laughs> Sit down, sit down, <laughs> sit down! Boy, you almost got the trees, that too. That's a pretty good fall. Falling comes, it, you know, it comes, that's it. Sometimes I fall, 
You still have a couple of things to work on. You're a little bit too upright sometimes. I would get you a little bit more forward. You're finishing your turns pretty well. And with that, it's time to finally call it a day. But not without one last random exercise from this forever young skier. You know what I do? I like to have fun. I like to have a race. A race? race? You know All right, race? pop off the day. As you can see, the Whistler Blackcomb staff really do make the lessons a lot of fun. And as George said, yeah, there's people falling everywhere, which is what makes it so great. You learn not to take yourself so seriously. Okay, well, moving on here. The Whistler Blackcomb Snow School offers their lessons on both Whistler and Blackcomb Mountain. So for my fourth and final one, I thought I'd give Blackcomb Mountain a try. Did I pass with flying colors? Well, let's find out. Well, viewers, I've finally reached my last day of lessons. Oh, well, I think I'm doing pretty good. I gotta admit, my head is full of all the information my instructors have given me. However, George does say I'm ready to do a green run, so let's try it out. Vanessa, we're at the top of Blackcomb now. This is where I Beautiful. usually work. So we're gonna start by maybe doing some side slipping. Maybe we're gonna learn how to do a hockey stop oh, today. Hockey okay. on the mountain, yeah. Hockey on the mountain. <laughs> Very Canadian. Let's see if we can score. The purpose is so that if you're on steep terrain and you really want to control your speed, you really learn how to power your edges. You turn and you put your edges hard. So is that instead of a pizza, that's just another way to stop? It's just another skill that you have to learn. My first attempt of the day, a bit of a dramatic one. <laughs> nice balance. <laughs> but after a bit of practice. Good. I finally nailed the Canadian move. Next, George has me practice one of the most valuable skills for beginners. It's a little bit steeper here. It is. So I want you to concentrate on one thing, completing your turns. Control's not a nice word, but in skiing, it's a good word. And finish the turn back up the hill. Completing your turns is to control your speed. If you come back up the mountain, you're gonna slow back down. Finish the turn right up. Super. You're an amazing learner. I really like that. You learn fast. A little bit of a scream once in a while, Oop. Ah! but uh, generally it's pretty, uh, pretty good. For my last exercise of the day, I learned how to use my poles to maintain balance. The uphill pole, drag it and keep dragging it all around the turn. And then it's finally time for what this 13-year instructor lives for. I think we're ready now for some speed. I like speed, I like thrills, I don't know, it's fun. Mileage is important to get motor memory. You know, so that your skiing gets easier. I gotta admit, cranking up the speed was a little scary at first. George! It's too fast! But then I remember to concentrate on the main tools my instructors have taught me. Complete my turns, look where I'm going, and have fun. For George and the over 1,300 Whistler Blackcomb instructors, it's this sight of once timid skiers, now confidently cruising down the mountain, that keeps them going. That's my main purpose, to get people turned on to ski. I'm out in the fresh air, it's got speed, it's a real social sport too. On Wisa Black Home, we have the old days, but not the bold days. Whether you're a ski instructor or just a skier, you develop lifelong friendships. Oh, that felt amazing. Hopefully it looked that good. That looked awfully good for someone who's taken four half-day lessons. <sighs> You are really super. It feels incredible. Yeah, 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 and it's fun. So you know what? You gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep skiing. I will. I've got you're, the bug for sure. You're a natural. You'd be really good if you kept skiing. Okay. So I hope to see you on the mountain a lot. It's my promise to you, George. I'll keep it up. And then we can go for apre ski after. Woo, that's even more fun. Apre? I'm getting emotional just watching that last scene. It's funny how quickly you bond with your uh, ski instructors. So thank you again so much to Andrew and to George for the lessons. And I guess that's it. I'm officially a skier. Believe it or not, since this uh, lesson's wrapped up, I've actually been up to Whistler a few times and I didn't fall too much, surprisingly. So something tells me I should cheers to this whole experience. Well, it turns out up in Whistler, there's a daily event where skiers and snowboarders get together to celebrate and have a few drinks. And a little thing we like to call Apre Ski. Well, now that I'm officially a skier, I'd say it's time to relax. And nothing says relax more than Apre Ski. Started in the Alps, it turns out Apre Ski now takes place in almost every restaurant in almost every ski resort, including here at the Garibaldi Lift Co. In fact, they say they consider their Apres to be an art form. So let's check out the masterpiece. It's kind of crazy. The sun comes out, a whole patio fills. 
the whole of the inside's full. Yeah, it's definitely a, a busy seed <laughs> and a fun seed. The word après is French for after, and it's clear that here at the GLC, this is the way to celebrate after a full day on the hill. Once they've had an amazing day on the hill, they want to celebrate or talk about how amazing their day was. We definitely have some great beer, great cocktails. After my day of skiing, I meet up with my friend and Apres ski expert Vanessa to try out this social event. It's just got an amazing vibe. Yeah, it's just, just really fun. Yeah. These fully loaded Caesars, just what the doctor ordered to boost back my energy. Of course, no girls hangout is complete without some grub. You have to try the nachos. For this New Zealand native and so many other skiers and snowboarders, Apres ski has almost become a daily or weekly routine, which judging by these yummy nachos, isn't hard to see why. The event has become so popular in fact that even visitors, including Fraser who's from the UK, put it at the top of their Whistler to-do list. They told us that the Apres ski is pretty good so we came down and checked it out and uh, the live bands out here are really impressive. Now that I'm nice and warmed up, it's time to hit another spot that's been doing Apres ski for over 30 years. It's a pretty much a big party. It's always back. Here at the Longhorn Saloon and Grill, 350 people pack its patio every day during peak season. Along with amazing views of the mountain, the saloon also has a live DJ, pool, and over-the-top cocktails to keep the party going. We have our legendary bulldog. It's a two ounce margarita, so it's uh, one and a half ounces of tequila, half an ounce of Cointreau. The slushy margarita mix and a Corona flipped upside down inside it. It's wild, yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, every time is a new experience. Just such a great vibe, we've got the good music on, live DJ, and uh, of course, the brilliant shot ski. I mean, you've, you've tried the shot ski, right? I haven't, that sounds kind of dangerous. You haven't? Oh, definitely. Come on, let's go try it. There we go. One, two. Today, the culture of Avray ski has grown just as big as skiing and snowboarding. And if this is what mountain sports is all about, count me in. It is so loud in here. I've literally lost my voice. But I got to say, I'm so happy. I finally learned what this Avray ski is all about. But I think I have a bit more research to do. So, cheers. That was one messy shot ski, but so much fun. Well, that wraps up Shot to the six part Learn to Ski series. Thank you so much for joining us. And even bigger thank you to the Whistler Blackcomb PR team, my instructors, everyone that made these lessons possible. It was truly an amazing experience. And if you yourself want to learn how to ski or snowboard, be sure to sign up for their lessons at whistlerblackcomb.com forward slash snow school. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the hill.